All right, welcome to Talking Investing. I'm Tom, and as always, this is not financial advice. Today, I want to do our daily Bitcoin and Bitcoin miner update weekend edition. I want to go through Bitcoin and the Bitcoin miners. There's a bunch of information on both, so I'm going to try and get through all this stuff as fast as I can. If you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Also, everybody, if you could please smash the like button, it helps the channel out a lot. Lastly, you can become a member of the channel by hitting the join button on YouTube. And if you're using Apple products and you don't see a join button, you can hit the link below and you can join that way. Members have a bunch of member only content that they get on top of my regular content. In addition to that, we have one once a week members only live stream. So it really does help support the channel and it's only $5. So I appreciate anybody who's willing to sign up uh, and get some extra content. Okay, enough said. Let's talk about Bitcoin and the Bitcoin miners. I want to go through the Bitcoin miner big board. I want to go through where we left off at the close of business on Friday. So that's about 24 hours ago. So yesterday was not a good day for the market or for the Bitcoin miners. Some of the Bitcoin miners had very big down days. Marathon was down 8%. Riot was down 9.8%. Core Scientific was down over 10%. Gree was down over 10%. Wolf down 7.6%. Mawson was down 15.79%. So there were a lot of very, very big moves to the downside. A lot of the other ones had some, I would say, medium moves to the downside. Bitfire Farms was down 5%, Hut was down 4%, Hive was down 5%. So there were some in that range. There was one that ended up green on the day. As always, there seems to be one outlier. DigiHost was up 0.4%, but DigiHost is just a few pennies off of its all-time low. So that is not performing well either. We're going to look at a chart of how all of these stocks have been performing over essentially the last 100 days. And you'll be able to get a better concept of how they're doing. And DigiHost, unfortunately, is not doing well. But it was green on Friday. So other than that, complete red across the entire board. That was consistent with the market. The market was down across the board on Friday. Okay, so Bitcoin was actually down on the day Friday as well. However, I want to take a look at Bitcoin because Bitcoin has been behaving very well, in my opinion, over the last 45 days specifically. So although it was down, it's still within a very, very tight trading range. So we're going to take a look at that. This is a big Bitcoin on the 15 minute time frame. So you'll see that as always, there's an orange line on here where Bitcoin was when the market closed on Friday, and that was at $19,165. We're currently at $19,086. So we're still within $100 of that. And for almost the last 24 hours, we've basically been within $100 or less of that other than just five or 10 minutes. So this is an extremely tight trading range over the last 24 hours. And then I want to zoom out to the larger time frames and show you what Bitcoin's been doing because I think there's actually some very encouraging information here. Okay, this is Bitcoin on the one day time frame. So what I want to show you is starting on September 1st. So that is essentially a month and a half ago. It's now October 15th. So that was one and a half months. That's 45 days ago. So on September 1st, Bitcoin was at around $20,000, $20,100. It's a month later and it's now around $19,100. So we did have a big burst to the upside. We had one nice little relief rally. We had a two day relief rally a few days ago. But other than that, you can see for the last 45 days, if you just follow this pink and this green line, we've basically been trading along this line all the way along. So Bitcoin has been extremely sideways. And I want to show you what Bitcoin's been doing specifically compared to the market, because this is something new. Bitcoin has been trading. Everyone's been talking about the correlation between Bitcoin and the NASDAQ for the last several years. But I'm going to show you in the last 45 days, Bitcoin has done its own thing and it's actually outperformed pretty much everything. Okay, so again, this is Bitcoin on the one day time frame. So what I've done here is I've added added a 45 day moving average. As it stands right now, it's about 2.8% below it's 45 day moving average. This is the QQQs which follow the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ is over 11% off of its 45 day moving average. So remember, Bitcoin was 2.8%. The NASDAQ's over 11%. But I want to look at a couple of other things as well. So you'll see the S&P 500 in that same period of time, you'll see the same gold line and you'll see it's a very steep downward gold line. The SPY is 8.4% off of its 45 day moving average. So again, Bitcoin was 2.8%. So you can see 
these are big, big differences. So the other thing I wanna show you is it's not just a cryptocurrency thing. I wanna look at Ethereum because, okay, so here's Ethereum in that same 45 day period of time. And remember the Ethereum merge and switch to proof of stake happened in this time. So people were expecting potentially a big run to the upside. Unfortunately, obviously that really hasn't happened across the market at all. But once again, you're gonna see a gold line that is a clear slope downward. And you'll see Ethereum right now is 10.4 4% off of its 45 day moving average. So for the last 45 days, Bitcoin has behaved considerably better than the NASDAQ, the S&P 500 and Ethereum. So that had not been the case really prior to this. We've been noticing a big correlation between Bitcoin and the NASDAQ. That seems to be separating for the moment and 45 days is a decent sample size. And I'm gonna go back to the Bitcoin chart because you can see just what the difference is. This line is much, much, much less steep. It's just 2.8% in movement. And really we had two relief rallies that were very distinct. But other than that, we've been absolutely sideways. This is just about the most sideways I've ever seen Bitcoin. Another clear way to look at this is the Bollinger Bands. So if you look at the Bollinger Bands, this has been now a very, very tight, we're about 10 days into being very tight squeeze on the Bollinger Bands. So the tighter the, tighter the Bollinger Bands, the closer they are together, the less volatile the asset is being. So when we see a tight squeeze like this for 10 days, this is the tightest squeeze I've seen on the Bollinger Bands in a long, long, long time for Bitcoin. So, you know, ultimately this typically ends up in a break on one side or the other. So obviously I'm hoping this breaks to the upside, but I see these 45 days as a massive period of consolidation and a period where Bitcoin was able to hold strong while everything else really was not holding strong. So, so I'm looking at this glass half full. I think that these 45 days have been very good for Bitcoin, although it's been pretty much sideways movement that has been strength in this very, very weak market. Conversely, the Bitcoin miners I wanna take a look at. This is a chart that we've been going through over the last few weeks on the channel. This is a chart measuring from, from their lows in June to where they closed on Friday. So you're gonna see now the vast majority of this chart has now gone into the red, which means most of these Bitcoin mining companies have now taken out their lows from this summer, which were basically two year lows. The Bitcoin miners are now performing below where they were when Bitcoin flash crashed down. You'll see Bitcoin itself is right here in gold and it's up 9% in that period of time. So all of these Bitcoin miners are underperforming and some of them on a fairly large scale, right? Up 9%, you've got four here in a row down 25% and you've got four more significantly worse than that. You do have some that have held on much better. You've got three that I have in green green here. These three have been the outperformers, Marathon, Hut, and Riot. The one big thing these three have in common is they are the top three in Bitcoin hodling. So those three companies have the largest Bitcoin positions out of all of the publicly traded Bitcoin mining companies. So I think it's no coincidence that those have held on a little stronger. They are still way off of their highs from August 15th. We had a nice relief rally ending on August 15th. So I'm looking at companies that have good operations reports that seem to be performing well operationally. However, their stock is performing very poorly. And you can see there is no shortage. All of these in red, clearly have, they have all taken out their previous lows. So obviously each one of these companies has a different story. There are a few of these companies that have had major, major overhauls of their entire organization. So, you know, there, there's some reasons some of these are down so deeply. However, there are some others in here that I feel I don't know what the reason is. Again, those are the ones that I look at that their balance sheets are just fine and operationally they're reporting they're having good to excellent monthly operational reports and they're still in the red so this is what i'll be focusing on this is where i think the opportunities lie this is where i think we're going to find opportunities i think some of these stocks that have been beaten down past their all-time low are oversold in my opinion. Obviously, this is not financial advice and this very chart right here can show you just how unbelievably volatile trading the Bitcoin mining stocks can be. But I do think we're at a moment in time where you can see over the last, this is basically the last 100 days, Bitcoin's up 9% and all but five of the Bitcoin miners are underperforming, some of them significantly compared to Bitcoin. Okay, so I just wanna close out on the one day time frame and take a look at the other thing. The two year low for Bitcoin was here back in June. So in the middle of June, Bitcoin flash crashed down to about 17,500. Even by the end of that daily candle, we were very close back to 19,000. Bitcoin bottomed out on September 21st. So I've created a blue line 
at that bottom. And you can see we almost perfectly retested that just a few days ago and we pulled way up off of that. So we have not been anywhere near retesting the Bitcoin lows from this summer. We're trading in an extremely tight range. The last 45 days have been, other than a few rallies up and down, we've been very, very sideways. So what I would be looking for, again, we don't know which direction this is gonna break in, up or down, but I would be looking to see if we can create a higher high. So in other words, in the beginning of October, we got up around $20,300. So that would be the biggest thing that I would be looking for. If we can set a higher high and get, you know, get up maybe more around $20,000, $2,500 to $20,700. I think that would start to set a precedent that potentially we're setting higher lows and higher highs. We need to get back into that pattern if we wanna have a relief rally. So I have been looking for a relief rally for the last month. I've been fooled more than once, but I am I still remain hopeful. This weekend has been very sideways, so we're gonna see if we break one way or the other. Okay, so that's all I have for now for on Bitcoin and the Bitcoin miners. Thanks so much for watching. Please remember to subscribe to the channel and smash the like button. All right, I'll see you in the next video.